What's up everybody, Hitman BK here, and we are redoing a video that you never got to see because I made one that was in a demon voice on accident. Um, so I'm happy to redo this for y'all. It it's a big video. My kids are behind me going crazy, uh, but I want to get this out today. And because the AMA was yesterday for Lords of the Fallen. Lords of the Fallen is a game I'm definitely going to follow. I am very much looking forward to playing. I'm as excited for Lords of the Fallen as I was. If y'all can hear them, I'm sorry. I've got kids. Um, but I'm as excited for, to play Lords of the Fallen as I was for Remnant 2. Um, and I think this is going to be an incredible Souls game. I've been talking about it on our podcast, which you can find on YouTube. Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're trying to hit 1,000 follow uh, subscribers by the end of September. I totally think we can do it. Uh, I'll help support the channel. Um, comment on anything you want to see and, and check out some of the other stuff we do. We have a podcast we do every Friday. Friday. We've got a lot of remnant um, news and just general updates. I think I think I've kind of fallen into this space on the channel to provide updates on games that kind of like I'm following um, and pulling communities from people who like those similar games. Uh, and feel free to join our filthy casual Discord as well. Uh, it's all about being chill, hanging out. You know, a lot of, a lot of just chill people, and that's what I want to. That's kind of like what I want to create here on YouTube. So. Subscribe, like, comment. Let's get right into this AMA of Lords of the Fallen. Oh, well, that was supposed to transition. Oh, right. This is a lot. There's a lot in here. There's a lot to cover. Uh, I'm going to cover the things that I personally really uh, thought were pretty big and I'm also going to provide a link to this direct AMA so you can come through and uh, see if there's anything else maybe that I missed or that you care about that you want to uh, look at but this is from Hexworks they did an AMA with the creative director the head of the studio and the art director for Lords of the Fallen they did this for uh, quite a while there's a lot a lot a lot of stuff in here uh, but there's also just a lot of really really good stuff just just to see and hear um, and so yeah let's just get like right into this the first guy who really Really dropped some good stuff was okay grapefruit he asked will there be any special bosses in umbra why did you choose unreal engine what's difficulty look like what's length look like uh will there be a demo the answer to that is no we're gonna skip that are there any enemies that transition to umbra after being killed in axiom so sort of like bosses uh and how many people worked on the game was his last question and we're gonna get right in Will there be any special bosses in Umbra? So this is already kind of answered. If you didn't know anything about the game, I could see why you would ask this. But if you do, essentially, I think the answer is kind of no, because um, he says basically yes, no. I'm, I'm, I'm guess there's probably something tied to Umbra. Uh, but he says almost all bosses have elements that offer you an advantage when you use your lamp. However, there are, in, are indeed some that fighting an umbral is the most efficient strategy. And the reason why I say yes, no here is because if you've been following the game, the way the death cycle works when you are in Axiom, which is the land of the living essentially, and you die, you actually get a second go at the fight. So like if you're in a boss fight and you die in Axiom, you die during the fight, you're going to res an umbral umbra umbral umbra and in there you're going to continue that fight and if you die again then you're dead dead you re you res at the closest shrine make your way back to the boss that very dark soulsy loop right uh but because of that essentially every boss in the game you're going to fight in umbra but what's really cool in this answer is it seems like there's actually some bosses and that you want to like almost die and just fight in umbral um because it's going to be where maybe they're weak the weakest uh and he says how uh there are indeed some um, almost all bosses have elements that offer you an advantage. I know there's like a certain, it might not be a boss, but there are enemies tied to Umbral because the longer you spin there, the more aggro you pull and you literally reach a peak where a essentially high tier, very powerful enemy will come at you uh, while you are in there, which is really cool. Um, in terms of using the Unreal Engine, they felt it was uh, able to fully realize their vision for the game. And I can kind of see why, especially the way people are talking about how well assets generation and that engine works creating two worlds on top of each other and the lighting and how they did that feels perfect for unreal 5 so i can kind of see why they did that and that's pretty much what their answer is here from high quality visuals that ensure immersive gameplay to dynamic lighting through lumen uh that enabled them to support the lighting for the two distinct worlds axiom uh and umbral and additionally, the widespread uh, adoption of technology makes it easier to find talented individuals to support the studio. So 
<laughs> excuse me y'all uh that's that's kind of why in terms of difficulty you know there this is a souls like so they said they designed a challenging experience aiming to instill a sense of pride when you say to a friend yo dude i've completed the lords of the fallen um and that's very tied to a very souls s game you'll both know just how tough that achievement is however they invested a lot of effort in creating a smooth onboarding process look essentially what he's saying y'all in this paragraph because he talks about how it is an rpg if you hit a wall you can farm i think they really look to soul or later souls games especially Elden Ring and how if you were playing that game and you hit a difficulty wall you could in theory then be like you know what I'm gonna go farm a bunch of ads beef up go back beat the guy um, and it, that's very similar I think to what they're talking about here if you are reaching a difficulty plateau you can uh, increase over level yourself in theory and go and take on that boss or phone a friend uh all these souls like games essentially if you want the easy mode that you can get in most games it's just pull a co-op if you pull a co-op buddy that drops the difficulty so much you just need somebody who's somewhat decent at a game and you guys will knock out a boss fight in no time um, in terms of length of the game, they've based on their play tests, which is using souls like uh, gamers to so people who have played other souls games. It took them 35 to 40 hours. This was not to 100 percent, though. So very beefy game. Um, they will not be releasing a demo. Uh, are there enemies that transition to Umbra after being killed in Axiom? He says this is sort of a spoiler because um, the answer, I, I assume, is yes. But he says the answer to this question contains important details about the game that you might prefer to discover on your own. So that's really exciting because that's going to lead to some really cool instances and replayability, I think. Yes, love. Yes, let me finish. Let me finish this video and I'll come help you. Um, so and here is where he was saying at the time estimated is not to 100 percent. I uh, mommy's watching the show in the living room. So you have to I'll get it out here in just a second. Um, and let's see. Uh, it, oh, yes. And so this is the question, too, that some people may not know. There are three endings in Lords of the Fallen. And this uh person was asking you know essentially through a playthrough will there be moments where you make decisions that affect your ending the answer is yes those moments will uh be in the early game uh, while others will happen mid game so it seems like basically at the start and somewhere in the middle of the game will kind of define one of those three endings so you're going to actually want to replay this game three times if you want to see or two times if you beat it once if you want to see all three endings um in terms of spell casting uh, somebody had asked if staffs uh, can bonk people, essentially be used as a melee weapon. They cannot, but that is because uh, anything that is a weapon is actually going to go in a weapon type. They say here that weapons like great swords, daggers, etc., cetera, uh, pole arms, which they have, are going to slot into a weapon slot, whereas magic is going to be casted by a catalyst, uh, similar, very similar to a Dark Souls game, um, from hands to amulets and so on. And those are actually going to go in the ranged option. I don't really know what that means. It doesn't. It, it sounds like, oh, just one second. Um, so those magic catalysts are going to be what you use to cast magic. A lot like Elden Ring. This is my daughter. She's amazing. I'm almost done, and then I'll help you. So you cannot bonk people, as he says, which is fantastic. Um, so I'm curious to see how that goes. I'm wondering if you are a magic player, if you also will have to spec into melee. Don't you, don't you wonder that, too, if you have to be melee and magic? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. Um, so another big one is kind of further down here. It releases Friday the 13th, which everybody, yeah, ooh, which, re which a lot of people are pretty excited about. Um, <laughs> uh, the other big one was, I think it was here. Yeah, you said you designed your world around no fast travel, and we're originally going to have no ancient vestiges either until you figured out it was too much for those to, new to souls like. So essentially, there's two questions here, and one is he thinks that his favorite, which is the favorite boss, favorite boss question, and this is just a fun one. He thinks his favorite boss in the game is the Light Reaper, which you've seen in the trailers. They've designed him to be like a true nemesis for Dark Crusaders, which is actually a class you can play. 
um, if you pre-order the game. He's a true predator, four arms, four blades, two and a half headed dragon, huge teeth, smile, and creepy laugh are the cherry on top of the cake. So that just sounds like an incredible boss fight. Um, but in terms of here, this is this is the third question is the one I really liked. And he was talking about how he they experimented quite extensively in early concept phase uh, with all sorts of mechanics. Um, the current mechanics actually emerged from feedbacks, marrying various concepts together in a way to streamline the solutions for their gameplay. In other words, the game is everything they thought was great. However, there were ideas they didn't actually get to do and they want to do in the future, which everybody was happy to hear the future right um and then in terms of the difficulty like their general pillars are or like i was saying before is like a very souls game and in souls games a lot of people claim they're really difficult they are but the thing that makes souls games good and fair is the, of any boss fight in the game is something you can learn all, all bosses it's almost like for good souls games the boss fights are like a dance and eventually you can figure out the cadence and movement in which uh, they are attacking you and then, so it is in death where you actually learn how to take on those bosses and that's very much what he is saying here that they don't want anything to be frustration they want uh it to be a, a leveling uh, play field that they want you to feel like you can understand why you died and that you okay i can go back and change something and defeat that boss which is fantastic that's that's what makes a really good uh souls game in terms of drop weapons armors and consumables uh and how much of the story drives the gameplay this was also a really good question um they skipped the consumable one and the dropping of weapons i'm guessing maybe you can't do that with your friend. I'm not going to state anything. They didn't answer it, but he did answer about the story. And this is cool because souls games are very expositiony. Like you have to figure out the story through uh, conversating with NPCs In Lords of the fallen. The answer they have here is essentially the path you are on the current time path like what's happening around you the big beats will be told through cutscenes so that's really cool to see that narrative was a huge thing for them and they wanted to really lean into it and that in terms of figuring out the past that's my other daughter in terms of figuring out the past you actually will do that through these hey through these souls that have been um essentially tormented and you can go up to them talk to them and learn secrets figure out what happened and more and figure out what happened in the past this is going to be a crazy video y'all um and the big one here that we'll finish on it's really good this is uh are there any other online systems the re is there a revenge system have you play tested the game on different hardwares this is optimization and a lot of performance stuff and so to label up all the answers here he said there is a system for that you need to be online for outside of just pvp and that's in yes look Yes, I'm almost done. Engaging with the faction shrines. So each god is going to have its own shrine located somewhere in the world. And if a player is not online, you won't be able to interact with those shrines. Um, and those shrines will have their own currency and purchasable goodies, which is really cool. There is a, the revenge system in the game is set for PvE content. So all players will be able to engage with this mechanic regardless of the faction they pursue. They have tested a ton of uh, specifications across PC. They've labeled what those what your specs need to be. They basically say if you hit those specs, you should be fine. This game will have the latest DLSS and and, and she's got a dinosaur and an FSR, which is great. Uh, quality and performance modes are exclusive to consoles, obviously, because on PC we can um, we can make all those changes ourselves. And then we're gonna scroll down a little bit more so I can get her what she needs and get y'all some of this stuff i just really want to get people excited for this because i think this game is actually really really cool so the last things we're going to finish on here is spells uh somebody was asking if you can summon more necromancy as stuff and have people actually follow you like minions because there is some summoning you can do but it is on a very short time period and the creative director says that they do have spells that manifest entities attacking independent from the player but they are short-lived indeed I'm, I am almost done. However, they have a number of spells that strengthen the fantasy of the Necromancer Death Knight, as it was one of their most prioritized fantasies. So that's really cool if you are one of those kind of people. I am incredibly, incredibly, incredibly excited to see what that looks like. And then the last, the very last thing that someone asked, they have a boob slider. They do not. I, think, I don't even know why anybody asked that. That I wanted to cover is kind of near the end here. Um by i might have just passed it um no here it is by the hex the hardcore casual this is the last one summer 
And that's, is there a feature in the game similar to Elden Ring's guard counter? And this is where you may press a strong attack directly after a successful block to counter back with an attack. And they said they have their own system on shield play based on what you described. He thinks people that that, that guy's going to like it. So if anybody like likes that system, you will like it. Their parries are timing based. However, blocking at the right moment will damage enemy posture, eventually leading to a stun. But if you miss it, you actually will. So your health will start to fall. But if you can get a hit in while your health is falling, you will recover it. However, if you get hit again, you will lose it. So there'll be this interesting tug of war like where if you can nail the perfect dodge you can work on a stun but if you miss it you just got to make sure you get a hit in before you get hit again to get that health back which i think is really really cool um combat was a huge one for them in terms of the biggest challenges they face as a development team they think it's very important to deliver that very good combat system like i was mentioning earlier because that's kind of like what defines a big souls game um and that's again the same answers on this boss attack that makes it fair or unfair is being able to craft a game that allows you to get the feedback you need from bosses um so it's really great to see that and they do have a bunch of consumables some that seems they will be used to find secrets which is also very cool so there's a lot of stuff in here and i could go on for forever but i think my girls might lose their minds if i do that um so i hope everybody like gets in here and looks at some of the stuff i'm going to continue to pick up coverage of this game as it gets closer there's been a lot of news about it um and i think it's really going to be a very good souls game i actually think it has potential to create systems that other souls games might pick up like the umbral system in this on paper sounds like a great evolution of what a dark souls game can be check it out Keep it locked in the channel for more information. I'm going to go get her what she needs. I hope all of you have enjoyed this video. I know I was talking really fast. There's a lot to cover. The link will be in the description below. Thank you so much. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm HitmanBK. You want to say bye? Bye.